Hey everybody, this is my optics video tutorial on properties of light and reflection. It's intended for the students that I teach here in London at Central. Um, it might be useful to some other teachers or some other students, I hope so. But, uh, you know, it's still really intended for my students. Um, but I hope you can all get something out of it anyhow. Um, if you are in my class, what you're going to be doing is as you watch this, you need to take some notes. Okay, so let's have a good time with that if we can. Um, so, write down the title, Properties of Light and Reflection, and uh, this is in the optic strand, and this is what we're going to be talking about, and as you can see here in this first image, we got a picture of a very cute baby, probably looks like one of you guys in class, maybe you can figure out who it looks like the most, all right, and this baby is looking at itself in the mirror, and of course, light is bouncing off of the mirror going back uh, towards the baby, and we can see the reflection of the baby. Now, this is a plain mirror, all right, now, when we say plain, we don't mean ordinary, oh, it's just a plain old mirror, we mean it's a flat mirror, all right, now, don't get confused because this thing is round, all right, but it's still flat. There is a difference when we'll come eventually in the future to talk about curved mirrors, all right, where the light comes in like this and it'll bounce off in a more complicated way. So uh, we are going to talk about um, properties of light and reflection, etc. Okay, so here we go. Um, the first term we want to look at is the, is the term called medium. And when we say medium, we're not distinguishing between like small fries or large fries or medium fries or soft drinks or something like that. The medium is the substance that the light is traveling through. So for example, the substance through which light or which a light wave is traveling is called a medium. Examples being air, all right, that's why you can see this video or see each other because light is traveling through air. Now, air might seem like it's nothing, like there's nothing there, but there is something there, right? There are particles, there's oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide and dust and all that stuff. But light doesn't actually need a medium to travel through, as you'll see in a minute, all right? But light can travel through air, and that's what I'm illustrating here in this first image. All right, a uh, dusty, murky, uh, magical forest here, and light, of course, travels through, and you can therefore see the, the forest for the trees. This will be a corny video, probably. Um, by the way, you can see the light rays here because the light is actually bouncing off particulate matter, off the dust particles, whatever. But even without the dust particles, you could still see the forest. Light can travel through glass, which is another medium, all right? And here you can see some windows, and the light is coming through. And once again, you can see some rays because of the particulate matter uh, in, uh, in this uh, building here. And light can travel through water, all right? Now, of course, the, the different media will affect how light travels through it, the speed, the direction. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so light can travel through various media. That's the plural of medium. But light does not need a medium to travel through. All right? Light does not need a medium through which to travel. It can travel through a vacuum. Now, when we say vacuum, we don't mean the thing that you use on your carpet to pick up the dust, all right? We mean the absence of any matter, and that is what a vacuum is. And by the way, if you ever get confused as to how do you actually spell vacuum, just start with this and go vacuum, um, how do I spell that? Vacuum, um, and you have it. All right, anyways, a vacuum is the absence of matter, and a good example of that is space. All right, light can travel through space. We all know this because you can see the moon, you can see the stars. Um, and so therefore light does not need matter to travel through. All right, now of course light can't go through uh, a thick solid that is um, opaque, right? It's not gonna go through the wall, all right? It'll bounce off the wall to some extent. But light can travel through empty space. Okay, so a little bit of details about uh, the medium. Now, as we've already mentioned, when light hits an object, a surface, it can be reflected. So let's talk about the concept of reflection. Reflection is the change in the direction of a light wave as it bounces off of some kind of medium. So when it bounces off of um, a mirror, let's see, 
Let me get rid of that. Here we go. If it bounces off of a mirror, right? The light's going to come in. There's the mirror. Light's going to come in. It's going to hit, and it's going to bounce off. All right? Or you got some water here. Light's going to come along, and it's going to bounce off. And it's going to bounce off in different ways, and there's different types of reflection. Okay? But it's the change in direction. As you can see, the light ray is coming in this way. All right? It's going from, like, left to right, sort of uh, roughly horizontal, and it comes off. And it goes the other way, complete other way, bouncing off. I mean, this is obvious. If you throw a ball against a wall, it bounces off the wall. It's reflecting. And think of light in the same kind of a way. So here we have an image of some pottery. We have, again, a plain mirror, a flat mirror. And this is the reflection of the original. Now, the original is called the object. And what you see is called the object image so you need to get those terms down and the symbol o for object i for image okay now of course as you're going through this this uh, video tutorial you don't have to draw these images all right or objects you don't have to draw this picture all right there will be others to draw now there are different types of reflection and i kind of mentioned that uh depending on the surface that it's uh, bouncing off or reflecting off uh, it can be a really smooth, shiny surface or a really rough surface. So specular reflection occurs when the surface is smooth and shiny. Specular reflection occurs when the surface is smooth and shiny. I think I got a picture here. So obviously a plain mirror, you know, that baby originally or that pottery is uh, the, the reflection is coming off of a very smooth, shiny surface. You can also have specular reflection in the summertime, when you're camping, having a good time, no homework, no teachers, no optics lessons, and you're sitting out there, and there's the sunshine, and there's the light, and it comes down, and it hits the surface, and it bounces off really nicely. And you can see, see the, see the way you can see the trees right there? You can see the reflections, and they're, they're, they're pretty clear uh, reflections right there, all right? This is called specular reflection when you get a nice, clean image because the surface is smooth and shiny. Now, what happens if the surface is not smooth and shiny? Well, that is called diffuse reflection. Now, maybe you've heard the word diffusion before. You know, when you have a bunch of particles or molecules and they start to spread out in every different direction, moving down their concentration gradients. You may have heard those terms or maybe not. All right. Well, they're diffusing. They're spreading out. And it's similar with diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection occurs when the surface is irregular. It's not smooth and shiny. It's an irregular, dull surface or bumpy surface. And this might be due to ripples on a lake. All right. Now, I showed you a lake a moment ago when we talked about the summertime and all that. Well, imagine this lake now. Let's use a different color here, blue. Okay. It's pretty rough, right? The, we got the, the tide there, the water, and all the rocks and the sand, right? You can still see reflections. Look, there's the, the reflection of the sun there, and you can see other things. Probably a reflection of a bird, and if there isn't there, there's a bird. There's a there's the reflection of the bird, okay? It's all messed up because when the light comes down, it comes down a straight line, it hits it, it starts to bounce off in all kinds of weird directions because of the irregularities of the surface. This is called diffuse reflection. Okay, great, let's move on. Okay, so in the science lab, you're going to be drawing reflection. We're gonna be doing this for quite a while, reflection and refraction and some other stuff, all right? In order to draw this, we use rays. Now, I've bolded this word, and I'm trying to bold some keywords as we go along. Reflection is represented using rays, rays of light, okay? These are straight lines, so this is why you draw this stuff with a pencil and with a ruler, all right? You have to use a ruler for this stuff. And you draw straight lines, and you draw arrowheads to show direction. This is why I've said to you guys before, to my classes, that when you're drawing, let's say a biological specimen, like let's say you're looking at a cheek cell or something, when you want to indicate something like the cell membrane, you don't use an arrow because arrows, 
tend to represent directions. They're used in physics. And this is part of the physics strand, right? The optics part. Okay, so we're going to use uh, rays and arrowheads, and it's going to look something like this. Now, this would be a good drawing to sketch. I don't want you to take 15 minutes to do it. You're going to do a quick, quick job. You've got to get used to doing stuff quickly, all right? So what you do is you quickly draw a horizontal line with a ruler or with something straight, all right? And this represents the plane mirror, all right? Flat mirror. Now, by the way, all this jagged stuff down here, they tend to draw mirrors with these sort of um, angled lines down here. That represents the back of the mirror, and this is the front. Like if you've ever seen, like in the science lab, right? You're looking at a piece of plain mirror. One side is the reflective side. The other side is the back of the mirror, all right? And that's what this represents. So draw the mirror, and then do this. Draw a line that is, oops, a dotted line, I want to go back to red anyhow, a dotted line perpendicular somewhere in the middle of the mirror. Okay, so put your ruler on there, draw a dotted line or a dashed line coming up. This is called the normal line. We'll look at that later. We'll de define that later. Then, now we're not going to be exact here, draw a ray with your ruler, a ray of light coming in, hitting the mirror exactly where the normal line also comes off of the mirror. Now, the normal line is not a real line. It's just an imaginary dotted thing, okay? Draw this ray coming in at any particular angle and put an arrowhead like this ah, somewhere in the middle of the ray. You don't draw the arrowhead there. You don't draw it there. And you don't do 50 of these things because it's like, it's this way, it's this way, it's this way, it's this way. You sick of me hearing that? I'm sick of seeing your arrowheads. So, you just draw one like that and then draw a ray coming off. But try to do this relatively with a similar angle to the angle coming in. In other words, this I stands for something called the angle of incidence. And that's because this, which you're going to label, is the incident ray. The incident ray is the ray that comes in and hits the mirror originally. And it makes some angle with respect to the normal. I mean, this might be 45 degrees, let's say right now. When you draw the reflected ray, note you're gonna draw an arrowhead coming out, it's gonna come out at roughly the same angle. Well, it should come out exactly the same angle. This is part of one of the experiments you do in class. I'm giving away some of the information. I know we've done part of the lab, we'll finish it. Um, but that's the idea, all right? So this would essentially be 45 degrees as well. This is the angle of reflection. It is not measured between the mirror and the ray. No, no, no. It's between the normal and the ray, the angle of reflection. And we'll be defining some of that stuff. All right, so I'm going to move on and uh, I'll see if you're, if you're ready to move on or if you need to pause the video or not. Okay. And okay, now, you don't have to draw this. This is just another uh, apparatus that you can use in the lab, right? So, for example, the ray box, all right? You've probably already seen this thing. Let's say you've got a single slit in the ray box. You're going to have a ray that's coming down. Notice this is called the incident ray, and I'm calling this I1 because if you do an experiment at various angles, you'll have I1, I2, I3, that kind of thing. Notice the arrowhead is somewhere within the ray. It's going to hit the mirror at uh, where the normal is. And then a reflected ray will come out, R1. R1 corresponds to I1. It's the reflected ray that started with the incident ray. Now, notice that I've drawn this angle different than this angle. And that's just because I don't, didn't want to give away, when I first used this PowerPoint, um, the relationship between the incident angle and the reflected angle, or the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, all right? I, I wanted to draw it differently so that you would have to experimentally figure out that, oh, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. This is one of the laws of science. It's a law of, of light or reflection. The angle of reflection is equal to the angle of, of incidence. Okay, and of course, in order to measure that, you would use your protractor, and this is why you need these tools. Okie dokie. So, nothing to draw there. Let's move on. Reflection terms. You need to get these. So, let's, let's just go over a few of these definitions to get them down now. The incident ray is the 
incoming light ray, incident incoming, all right? The incoming light ray that strikes the reflective surface. The reflected ray is the light ray that bounces off of the reflective surface. Now, it has to be a reflective surface. If it was, I mean, look, well, look put it this way. Um, you wouldn't typically think of like a, a book or a pen or pencil as a reflective item. You know, you think of a lake or a, or a mirror. But if you can see something, so for example, well, this has got a little bit of, sort of shininess on it, whatever. It's got a bit of luster to it, but this is my stylus for the thing I'm writing on here, right? All right, you can see this. Heck, you can see me, right? The reason you can, I'm not particularly reflective. I'm not a shiny uh, mirror or whatever, but you can see me because light is bouncing off me. So I guess I'm reflective and I guess this is reflective, but not as reflective as, you know, a nice mirror, all right? so. All right, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and then the normal. The normal is not a ray. The normal is a line, and it's got a weird name. It's like normal, like you think of, you know, oh, this is, that person is not normal or whatever, or it's not normal to do this. Um, <laughs> you don't say, you know, it's got nothing to do with the fact that it's not perpendicular to do this. It's just, it's a name in physics. Normal means perpendicular to some other thing that you're talking about. And in this case, we're talking about the line that is perpendicular from the reflective surface. So if this is the mirror, then perpendicular is this. This is the normal line. All right, okay. And really, when you do this, okay, and this is the normal line right here, th the point where the normal meets the mirror, that's where your incident ray will come in. You don't, you don't do this and then have your incident ray coming in over there. I mean, it can hit anywhere on a mirror. But when you draw a normal ray because you're doing these special optics diagrams, you have the incident ray hitting the normal. And you're, you're gonna see more about that as we go on. Okay, I'm gonna go on. If you need to pause this, then, then go ahead. Oh, more reflection terms, great, okay. Well, let's get down the angle of incidence. This is the angle that is measured from the incident ray to the normal, as I've, as I've told you already, from the incident ray to the normal. So if this was your mirror and this was your normal and this was your incident ray coming in hitting there like that, that would be the angle of incidence between the incident ray and the normal. And if that was your reflected ray, which is gonna be the next part, this is your angle of incidence. Be careful, it's not that angle there. Oh, let's get rid of that. Okay, angle of reflection. The angle measured from the reflected ray to the normal. I mean, I suppose you could go from the normal to the reflected ray. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. And by the way, a plane mirror is a smooth, flat, reflective surface, all right? I mean, you know, uh, this, this thing that I'm writing on, uh, you know, is a little bit reflective, but you, you wouldn't call that a plane mirror, all right? It's got to be really shiny and highly reflective in order to be a plane mirror. Now, let me just see. I think that's the last, yeah, that's the last one on that page. Okay, we'll go on. We're going to do a little bit more here. Like I say, pause it if you need to. Now, the laws of reflection, I've already uh, talked about them a little bit. If you just have a look at this drawing, you don't have to draw this, but just once again, note this is this uh, represents a plane mirror. Now, you'll note that they, they don't draw the angle, you know, the lines down like this uh, in this particular mirror. It doesn't matter. You'll also note that they draw the normal line as just this, this red thing, and I don't really like it like that. I really want you to draw with your ruler a straight but dotted or dashed line that would represent the normal and you should you should label it there's another couple of things about this um i really chose this diagram because it shows how the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and this is one of the laws of reflection that i'm going to show you in a second that we're going to write but i'm not really crazy about this i mean i just told you don't put an arrow there and don't put an arrow there but they've gone ahead and do it it's not the ultimate crime it's just not really the right way to do uh optics diagrams in grade 10 science okay so don't do that 
Okay, laws of reflection. Well, the first one I haven't talked about. The incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. Okay, so what this means is, here's our incident ray coming in, hitting the mirror at the normal, and the reflected ray is bouncing out again. If this was a piece of flat paper, okay, that's a piece of flat paper there, that diagram, and your incident ray was coming in, here, I'll try to illustrate it like this. There's my incident ray coming in, and it's going to hit the mirror. I can't really get it quite straight in the camera here. Hits the mirror. It comes out just like this, all right? It doesn't go like this, coming in, hitting the mirror, and then bouncing off, going out that way. It's all in the same plane. That's what that means. That one is a little bit difficult to explain, but then we have this one. The angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. And this is what I've been talking about earlier. Um, the angle of, in of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. Okay, one of the laws of reflection. Okay, and that's something that you generally prove in the, in the science lab with the ray box and the plane mirror and measuring the angles and stuff like that. All right, we are coming to the end of this. This is a couple more things I want to talk about. Write down this title, Image in a Plain Mirror. Now, you're going to go on, and I've got another video tutorial here. It's just called Optics uh, Tutorial, I believe. And it'll talk about how you see uh, an image in a plain mirror and characteristics of that image. And that's what I want to talk about right here. Um, we've got this animal here, this giraffe looking at itself in in a plane mirror and you've all done this looked at your face before hopefully you don't look like this in the morning although it's a beautiful animal of course if you are a beautiful animal then fine all right this is the object here so this is O. this is the object this is the image right here and you're going to notice a couple of characteristics when the giraffe looks at itself in the mirror it doesn't see itself upside down right when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning you brush your teeth you're not like whoa i'm upside down Okay, so that's one characteristic, right? It's right side up. It's not, it's not upside down. The other thing is, this giraffe is almost pressing its nose on the mirror. It's just a couple inches away. Well, the image looks the same way, right? When you get up close to a mirror because you really want to look at yourself, you know, and you're physically getting close to the mirror, your image is getting closer to the mirror as well, all right? So the image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. So if you start moving back like this, your image moves back and you look a little bit smaller. So that's another characteristic in a plain mirror. All right. Um, another thing is, okay, so we got the right side up. We got the distance. Okay. Um, well, let me just go ahead and give you some of these, these points right here. Okay. These are called the SALT characteristics. Okay, because this is an acronym for what you're about to see, the SALT characteristics. S stands for size. The image can be smaller, larger, or the same size as the object. Well, it turns out in a plain mirror, not those weird mirrors that are curved and all that you see at the uh, circus or whatever. In a plain mirror, the image is the same size as the object. All right, so that's one characteristic to learn. The size is the same for the object and the image. A stands for attitude, whether or not the, the image is upright or inverted with respect to the object. Now, if this giraffe was upside down, the real giraffe, the object, the image would be upside down. That is the same attitude. If one thing's upside down and the other thing's upside down, that's the same. But you, like I said earlier, you don't stand upright and look in a mirror and then your image is upside down. The attitude is the same. So we say that the image is upright. If the object is upright, the image is upright. If the object was upright and the image was like this, that would be called inverted. Now that will happen in some types of mirrors, but not in the plane mirror, all right? So that's why we're, we're doing it. It seems obvious. But just wait, it's going to get a little freaky. Okay, location, I already mentioned that. The location, whether or not the, the image is in front or behind the mirror. So, okay, the image of this giraffe is behind the mirror, all right? Now, if you go behind the mirror, there is no other giraffe there. The image isn't actually there. It appears to be there. It's an optical illusion. Our brain... Uh, 
interprets it as being behind the mirror. Um, and it's also the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. Now, this gets weird, right? This, this kind of stuff. But the, the cool thing is, this image is not a real image. It's not really there. So the last part of the salt characteristics, T for type, this is called a virtual image. It's like virtual reality. It's not really there. Again, if you go into this little wooden house and look behind uh, the giraffe, there is no other giraffe back there. This is called a virtual image. It's not really there. Now, there are real images, and a real image is something that you can project on a screen and see it. You won't understand that yet, but I will show you that at some point, and you'll go, Oh, so that's a real image. I can, it's really there on a piece of paper. All right, we'll bounce um, rays from an object off of a mirror and they'll actually hit. But this is a virtual image. Now, don't let this bug you yet, okay? Don't think you have to deeply understand it at this point. It'll become more evident as we go on. Just for now, learn that the image in a, in a plain mirror is called virtual it isn't really there okay because think of it this way the rays are bouncing off this are, are coming from this giraffe okay i mean because they're coming from the sun they hit the giraffe they bounce off they hit the mirror the rays are really bouncing back let's say in various directions therefore the image which is formed by light can only be out here for it to be real you can't have the light doesn't go through the mirror like magic and then make another giraffe the rays are bouncing back so it's not a real image all right i don't know if that makes sense to you don't panic about it yet okay where am i at let's see if there's a little bit more of this or what Okay, so I'm just going to show you this and I'm just going to do it really quickly because this is what you're going to be doing in my next video tutorial, um, locating the image in a plain mirror and looking at the salt characteristics. What I've got here is a mirror. This is the front of the mirror. This is the back. This is an object. I've just drawn the letter F. And what we try to do is form the image. How is it going to look? And what you do is once you've got your mirror and you've got your object, you draw a line with a ruler from a particular point on, on the object. Doesn't really matter where, but in this case, in the F, I've chosen this part of the F. You use your ruler and you draw exactly perpendicular to the mirror and you measure this line. You then draw with your ruler from where it hits the, the mirror, or from the mid middle of the mirror, let's say, the exact same distance behind, but you dot it because these are like virtual rays, all right? Choose another point, draw exactly perpendicular, all right? So this one, you know, is gonna be a little bit longer, this top one, this a little bit shorter. You draw the same distance back, maybe choose a third point, and then you can draw your image based on where these lines end. And it takes a little bit of time to be able to see it, but what you will discover is the salt characteristics, hey. The salt characteristics, the size of the image is the same. The attitude is upright. I know it looks tilted, but this one's upright, this one's upright. They're tilted because this point here has to be the same distance behind the mirror as this point is in front, all right? And that's part of the location. It's the same distance, but behind the mirror. And finally, it is a virtual image. It is not really there. It's just the way it is. It's a virtual image. Okay, that's the end of my little tutorial here. I hope that helped. See you again soon.